up? This is Josh Room from East West Healing and Performance. And today we're going to be talking about the GI system and how many things in our body physiologically, like getting scared, can actually have a profound effect on our GI system. Now, I want to actually preface this with most of this information, if not all, is taken from the Metabolic Blueprint Program, which is our program. And you can check on it on the link below. Click on that link. It'll take you to the web page. You can watch the video, learn more about the program, learn more about the tiers, and hopefully sign up for the program. But I want to talk about the GI system because, of course, we have people from way back in the day. Now, like I said, I always say, I don't ex I'm not a doctor. I don't know it all. I don't think I know it all. I'm just sharing the, the things that I learned because I'll be talking about people like Mechnikov, you know, different physiologists, chemists, etc., and I'm not saying I'm better than them. I think, you know, that we sometimes we have to question what's going on because, yeah, you have people like Eugene Sandow talking about the gut. And, you know, you can't have optimal health without optimal visceral health, which I agree with. People like Mechnikov, early 1900s, talking about how death or disease begins in the gut, etc. You have all these people, which I don't disagree with them. But at the same time, we have to take it a step further and understand that the body is a system of systems. You can't have a gut problem without having a metabolic cellular issue. You can't have a gut problem without having a hormone issue or immune system issue. Most of your immune system's in your gut, et cetera, et cetera. You can't have a gut problem without having a liver, kidney, gallbladder, et cetera, problem. You know, I mean, the list just goes on and on. So we have to look at the body as a system of systems. Now, we talk about this in the Metabolic Blueprint because I just think that, you know, I've been in this industry a long time and I see the, the fluctuations that are going on, and everyone, you know, is focusing on labs at one point, and then we're focusing on supplements at one point, and then we're doing, you know, um, <coughs> kinesiology and muscle testing for the gut, and then we're doing this, and we're doing that, and it's like, it's these waves, and honestly, in the past 15 years of being in this industry, nothing's changed. Personally, nothing's changed. What has really changed in regards to healing the gut? Well, of course, I'm biased, and I think that one of the biggest changes in this industry is the work of Ray Pete, the work of Broda Barnes, our Metabolic Blueprint program, the people that are out there that are studying Ray Pete's work, that are promoting Ray Pete's work, et cetera, et cetera. But I just think really nothing's changed in this industry. I mean, everyone's doing labs, everyone's doing supplements. It really doesn't work because you're not getting to the, the deeper rooted issue. You have to think about this. Now, I have a lot of notes here, as usual, and they're kind of just all over the place, so I might refer to them. Got three pages of notes, so this could be a two-part, three-part, who knows video. Just depends how long it takes. First of all, I don't think people completely understand the gut. Everyone's focusing on dysfunction. How do you treat candida? How do you fix H. pylori? How do you fix someone that has no bacteria in their gut? Everyone's focusing on the problem. As I've said before, my take on physiology is you can't understand dysfunction or treat dysfunction if you don't understand function. That's plain and simple. So why is everyone studying the negative effects of candida, the negative effects of H. pylori, the negative effects of having no gut bacteria, instead of fully understanding what our gut is, all the different organs in the gut, from the mouth to the esophagus to the stomach to the sphincters to the small intestine, liver, gallbladder, large intestine, colon, rectum, all these different organs. What are the organs of the GI system? What do they do? Where do we break down food? Where do we absorb it? All these different things. That's the most important thing. Because if you understand the bacteria in your gut, and you understand the GI system is pH driven, and you understand all the different enzymes and nutrients and what plays and what you know happens because of this and what's released and causes that, I'm kind of breakdancing right now, then you'll have a better understanding of dysfunction. Why not study the gut and maybe what creates the environment for H. pylori to flourish instead of trying to, you know, eradicate it. I can't honestly, I can't tell you. I'll be honest with you. Well, I'm actually going to lie to you. and I'm just kidding. I would say the most amount of emails and calls we get on a daily basis, and it's almost to the point where it's out of control. People call us and email us on a daily basis from all over the world and said, I have been trying to get rid of H. pylori forever. I've done the labs, I've done the medications, I've done the supplements, and I still have it. I've spent thousands of dollars. I have no more money. It's not working. It's not working. Supplements do not fix the problem. So I'm going to get off my little soapbox and tangent here and get back on track. 
We have to understand physiology in the entire body so we can understand ourselves, get close to ourselves, create awareness around ourselves. Instead of studying how to fix a problem with a diet, how to fix this, how to fix that, how do you fix frozen shoulder, etc., etc. Understand your gut and what's involved in the processes of the gut and what organs those actually are and what they feed, etc. Because just because your gut or your small intestine is part of the gut, it's actually part of your immune system as well. So enough of that. So I think we have to understand that because if we understand that, we'll understand what the gut influences, what is influenced by the gut. And that's the most important thing because if you study the work of Ray Pete, you study the work of Broda Barnes, you study the work of Hans Celia, all these different people, I mean, they show you and explain down to the physiological level what's going on and how, this is our take on it, that we really try to get the, the point across. How an underlining metabolic issue, and when I say metabolic, namaste, I'm talking about a cellular issue down to the cell level which directs everything in your body. As I've talked about, your cells have two choices, to produce CO2 by using optimal oxygen and glucose and T3, etc. So they're going to produce ATP, CO2, and water, which is energy. Or are they going to produce lactic acid, which is inflammatory. Your cell has two choices. They direct everything in your body, your tissues, and your metabolism. So from our understanding of physiology, a deeper-rooted cellular issue. Now, this goes way beyond just a cell issue. Of course, it comes down to how you live, what you eat, your ratios, frequencies, all these different things. And you can learn more about it in the Metabolic Blueprint. But at the same time, and I'll talk about this, we believe, we meaning Jeannie and my wife and I guess many other people, and Ray Pete and all these people that are following them, and, you know, Broda Barnes and Hans Celia and all these great MDs, that a deeper-rooted, primary, metabolic, cellular issue, how your cells are using oxygen and glucose. Are you not taking in enough sugars? Are you taking in the wrong types of sugars? Are you not producing enough T3? Et cetera, et cetera. Are you vitamin A deficient, estrogen dominant, progesterone deficient? I mean, the list goes on. But then I'll talk a little bit more about this. But it's a deeper-rooted cellular issue that's actually down-regulating the GI system. Hans Celia talked about this over and over in almost all his books. Broda Barnes talks about this in a lot of his books. I remember on one of Hans Celia's videos, he talked about how anytime the body is stressed, now you can stub your toe, get in a fight, or eat a cupcake. A stress is 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 a stress, 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 stress doesn't matter. Your body reacts the same way. He, sh he showed through his, his work and his own research, and this is the thing that I, I love about people in the industry. I don't do my own research. I mean, I guess I do on a daily basis with myself and my clients, but I'm not in a lab or doing stuff. We have all these people saying that this person's wrong and that person's wrong. How can you say Ray Pete's wrong when he's done a lot of his own research? How can you say that Hans Celia is wrong when he's done a lot of his own research? So... I think it comes down to the misinterpretation of their work, maybe. That's my take on it. So he showed, getting back to the point, that when in a stressed state, the body's digestive juices, especially hydrochloric acid, pancreatic enzymes, and all these different juices, is actually down-regulated by 50%. 50%. The body always wants safety and security. Can you see me? Can you see me now? Can you see me now? The body always wants safety and security. If you're running from a lion, you're in a sympathetic state, you're stressed, you're not down-regulating adrenaline and cortisol, you're not regulating your blood sugar. The body's in a hypometabolic, uh, hypo hyperadrenaline, hypocortisol, survival state. That's how most people are running around. That's why most people are gaining weight, losing weight, can't sleep, have PMS, they're infernal, they're in pain, etc. If you're running from a lion, you're not thinking about procreating, having sex, and taking a poop. You're running from a lion. This is why a lot of people can't have children. They can't procreate. They're having miscarriages. It's, it's, I know. This is the reality of it. And why people have GI issues. Because you're in a survival state. And when you eat foods, you need to eat foods to survive, you have trouble breaking them down. And when you have trouble breaking them down, they're going to putrefy, reincidify, ferment, etc., release toxins, nitrogenous compounds, overload the gut, overload the liver and the kidneys, leading to many dysfunctions. So it's a deeper-rooted cellular issue that's driving a GI issue. 